Yeah, you guys paint each other for fun. The girls get bored. It's like, oh yes, paint something on me. Every Friday night. (laughs) (laughs) We breathe a lot of paint here. I don't know. (laughs) So the whole helmet's carbon fiber, and then we candy it red first. So the whole helmet goes red. How do you manage to keep it clean? Because I don't see glitter anywhere in here. When we do metal flake, the girls call it glitter, but um, (laughs) if you're a guy, what do you do? Um. I finger paint helmets, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Guys come in, race car drivers of you know NASCAR, NHRA, Supercross, whatever, and uh, they have ideas in their head usually, and they say make it on the helmet, and that's uh that's our job. So this is kind of my office. I I don't really use this a whole bunch. This is actually Sam Bass's desk. Um, I had the pleasure of working with him, uh, you know, quite a bit before he got sick and passed on. So his wife didn't want this in a storage unit somewhere or a closet and, and wanted to be seen. So uh, I didn't, t- I told her it's not mine, it's on loan. She can have it back whenever she'd like, but you know, I, all, everything on here is how we had it too. You know, so like the pencil sharpener, phone, all the markers, um, you know, the goal is to like set it up exactly how he had it. Wow, I feel like I shouldn't even be standing here. I know, right? That's like... why I don't work in here a whole lot. It's just, it's too much, so. Wow. But uh, Is that a real? No, yeah. so these are like, these are just a couple helmets he had, uh, Sam had in his gallery. Um, the paint guns are mine. These are my grandfather's. He was an auto painter, like collision painter. So those are exactly how they came out of his shop. Uh, everything's like always racing, but I'm really into music. And that's how, kind of how me and Sam connected with the guitars and everything. So I found these headphones and I was like, oh, this is the coolest thing. So I, I framed it. And if you look at his signature, it's like before he had like his real... Yeah, like legendary signature. So I thought that, that was one. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was pretty cool to have something like way back in the college days before he was, you know, the Sam Bass that we all that we all know. Wow. Did your painting interest start with your your grandpa's painting? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I had a really cool art teacher and and Noel too. We both went to high school together, and uh, that I don't know. I didn't really have like any hobbies or anything crazy when I was younger and the airbrush kind of just fell into my lap with this art teacher I had. So like helmets weren't really like a a career path, I guess. And then uh, the more I got into racing, I was like, oh, you can paint this helmet and we can literally ship it anywhere in the world. So that's uh, that's how it started. And then moved to North Carolina like 10 years ago and it just, uh, it kept growing. So when we moved here, it was literally just a storage unit and myself and uh, we just kept getting bigger and bigger, man. <laughs> So you actually do finger paint helmets. I do. I'm, yeah. I, I thought you were kidding. That's. I know. <laughs> so everything has like a story in here. These four helmets are all Justin Allgaier's in the Xfinity series, and his daughter comes and helps me paint a helmet every year for the playoffs. So, and Justin has no idea what it's going to look like. Harper obviously does. It's in her head, and she's, uh, you know, thinking about it all year round. So. Uh, This was when she was three, I think, and it was just like finger painting, just her hanging out. And now she's, uh, you know, seven or eight, so we're on like our fifth one. And uh, she comes in, like throws the paint mask on, like grabs the paint gun. Like I don't even have to, I don't even have to hold her hand anymore. It's all, it's all her. So, wow. Yeah, it's cool. If you ever go in like Justin Allgaier's YouTube page too, um, we filmed the whole process. So every year he gets to like go back and watch it after it's done because you know he doesn't he doesn't have any idea what it's gonna look like until he puts it on the car. Well, that's awesome. Pretty cool. Yeah. Well, uh, I guess let's move on to where the magic happens. Where the magic happens. Yeah. Oh, he's got a Dunder. Is that Sam's Dunder Mifflin mug or is that yours? No, that's ours. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool stuff. Uh, we've used to paint for the Grave Digger, which is always cool. Chad Reed. Uh, this is a cool suit. I think it's from uh, 1985 or 86, something like that. Wow. So it's a Phil Parsons suit. But it's cool to see like how thin these are compared to like, the newer fire suits. And It blows my mind to think that there's like some kind of foil. You do that with like crinkled plastic or something in there. Pretty close, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's all, all pretty much paint. Most of the time, like maybe we'll throw a logo like this will be a sticker or that's a sticker but anything else like if it's a you know two color design or something like that it'll it'll always be painted we, don't, we try to use as least amount of stickers as possible more helmets oh we gotta you gotta show this one because my buddy we do the off-axis 500 every year which is our big go-kart race um and it just keeps growing every year but one uh one year my buddy was racing first time in town 
and he came here and raced. He ended up getting spun out and hit head on and the helmet went flying off his face with a GoPro on it. <laughs> and uh, so we retired that one and it's, it's now on the, the Hall of Fame, we like to call it. And then this is, this is where the magic happens. So Noel's doing the magic now. Um, yeah, I'm just putting some trim on the bottom of this before we put our final clear coat on it. Yeah, see? So I guess walk us through the process, how it's made style. You get a helmet in a box, what yeah, happens? Yeah, pretty much. So all these are in the boxes, just came in. Um, off season, obviously for us is insane because every driver, you know, for all three series um, and everything else, they all get new helmets, new, new sponsors, new everything. So uh, it's kind of like a race against the clock since, you know, October to, to February of how quick can we get stuff done for photo shoots and um i don't know whatever commercials anything like that and then the final push for kind of daytona for all the pit helmets and everything else yeah they come in on a box they get checked in um and then they get everything torn out of them it's all taped up um you know sometimes they're carbon sometimes they're composite just depends on on what the driver prefers and then uh, it all gets sanded down so all these are waiting to get sanded and then we uh draw up stuff on the Old computer like this for the chili bowl for Alex. Um, once he approves it, once Ally approves it, uh, then we I kind of figure out which artist in the shop is best for the job. So it's kind of like a tattoo shop. There's there's four of us that paint in here. So when one comes in, I kind of know uh, you know the best artist for the job basically. And as more drivers come in here, since we are in town, like a lot of the you know, drivers have relationships with Noel or, or Mike or whatever. So when they come in, they usually don't want to talk to me. They just want to go, you know, straight to their, their own artist in here, basically. So, um, yeah, once we get it done, we start with the, the base colors. It's all hand taped. You're sitting at your desk taping most days. Everyone thinks it's like painted, but you're honestly taping more than anything. And then uh, it goes in the paint booth and we start, we start spraying. So what's the paint booth look like? <sighs> the best super dirty right now <laughs> yeah so all these are primered getting ready these are almost finished these are indy car helmets wow um so yeah that's kind of the last stage is getting ready to get sanded um this one's like halfway through how do you what is this like chrome is that brushed or is that chrome no it's nice all chrome nice. based first so all these gray ones right here they're getting ready to get chrome tonight and then uh, that'll be the next batch next week that gets started to be painted. So, huh. yeah, the cow bush wing is ready to be done. This is Matt Crafton's uh, dirt helmet. He'll race that in Volusia. So, finishing it up. Does it irritate any little bit of part inside of you to scuff down and repaint a helmet that's no, already has paint on it? No, we already, I mean, we get pretty used to it by this time, you know. So, and then most of our guys, like, everyone gets brand new helmets, you know, for the most part. So we don't have to, like, sand anything down or sand our artwork off. You're basically just putting base colors on, clearing it, let it sit over the night, and then, you know, sanding it down, doing more artwork. So all of our sanders, they do, like, they kind of have a hard time grasping the concept when they're, you know, sanding over fresh artwork, so you kind of gotta ease them into it and figure it out. But oh, so this is sanded to put more on top of it. Yeah, it's more on top. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, they get cleared probably three or four times depending on the design or or whatever else. So like that one's pretty well done. Like it's just waiting for final clear. So like these will get sanded down one more time, just a quick scuff, make sure everything's super smooth, and then it gets final cleared, and then it'll be shipped to Bell, and they'll they'll build build it for us. Hmm. Huh. Well, that's neat. This that's... is the band booth. Watch your, watch your stuff, don't. Oh, don't a lot of people eat it on Every, there. Everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is William Byron's. So that'll probably be raced, um, not Daytona, but the, the next race. But we still have to get them all done because they'll do photo shoots and stuff like that. And uh, anything that Fox wants to do for, you know, leading up to the races or anything like that, you'll have to have all your stuff done uh, a couple weeks prior just to get all that media stuff for social media and whatever they need. So. That one's almost done. Um, this is our paint bank. A million colors, literally, we can mix whatever color you'd like. People love our man colors. A lot of the stuff we use the most of, we, we keep on hand. Um, and then we do all of our spraying, clear coating everything else. You'll notice how it's just big enough to fit helmets in here and nothing else because uh, 
you always have that friend that's like, oh, can I come paint my hood or my car or whatever? And I'm <laughs> like, no, there's you can't fit through the door. I can't get painted in here. <laughs> <laughs> can't feel guilty if you can't put it in here. Did you guys build this thing yourself? Uh, yeah, we had a company like stamp it all out for us, but then we had to build it all of ourselves when, when we got it in here. Hmm. So, and you can see how bad the, the filters are. That's literally, we changed all the filters like right after Phoenix, which was just a month or so ago. And this is already how dirty it's been just for how many helmets we painted already. Wow. So we'll have to change them out again and then we'll change them after Daytona. That's crazy. Yeah. So it gets dirty, but. Wait, keep waiting on the floor and keep the dust down, I guess. Huh. He's like learning stuff. So that's a vent up right outside? Yeah, so it goes right outside, sucks in here. It's a cross draft booth. It doesn't have uh, heat or anything in here. We have an oven if we do need to bake stuff. If it's like a, a quick turnaround and we need to get something shipped, uh, we can throw it in the oven. It's not a not a big deal. But most of our clear dries pretty quick, so it's not a, not a huge hassle. But uh, yeah, we put in this extra vent. That way if you're Airbrushing in here, you need a little extra ventilation or whatever, you just prop the door up and turn on the fan and it's a, it's a hurricane in here. So do you do like the really detailed art kind of like the portrait stuff in here? Yeah. And the bigger spray goes on in there? So Noel uses all his guns right there. That's Noel's setup. Um, all Iwata guns. It's kind of what we started out with, you know, when we were 14, 15 years old and uh, now we're lucky enough to have him as a sponsor of the shop. So we've we pretty much have never had to change guns or anything like that. So we use all Iwata airbrushes and then we use the uh, all Iwata clear coat guns, base coat guns, anything else big, uh, we can use any other guns. And they keep us stocked with, you know, nozzles, needles, anything we possibly need. So they're super easy to work with. I just noticed this is a Pininfarina on it. Isn't that the company that designs Ferraris? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, and they got those those cool fancy vending machines that I are mean, at five it, guys. It feels like a Ferrari in your hand, so I, I would assume so. <laughs> What's your favorite part of this thing in here? I don't know, probably the paint bank, because we've always grown up, me and Noel, like having little bottles of paint and like never really having a variety of stuff, just using whatever we could use, because we weren't, you know, didn't grow up just having whatever we needed at our fingertips, like we didn't have a body shop, so. Having uh, this rack, and we just got a new rack of there, um, that's pretty cool because we can literally choose any color, M&M's yellow or, you know, William Byron red or whatever, and that thing will mix it for us and tell us exactly how to make it every year. So when they do have like eight years of helmets, uh, every color is exactly the same. Hmm. So I think that's my probably my favorite part. So how does this thing work? Everything's got a straw yeah. in it. What is, how does this, okay. I've never seen anything like oh, this before. so sorry. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a pitcher, it opens up. So this thing is a, like a mixer, blender inside. So it goes on this and then it has a, like a pulley system that grabs on each one of them. And then Bruh. it mixes all the paint. That is really cool. Twice a day for 15 minutes. So all your paint always stay fresh. It's never like in the bottom of the can getting uh, gross and old. Wow. Yeah, pretty sick, huh? So how do you actually mix it? Um, so our computer program out there will tell us off the, like the card basically of the, the color code. Mm -hmm. um, we keep a lot of them in this book. This is kind of like, I don't know, our main colors, I guess. We'll use M&M's yellow, as I keep saying. <laughs> so like this is the yellow, this is the sample we use for, for Kyle. And then this will uh, this will tell us which can to grab, and then how many uh, ounces of each thing to pour into this, and the scale will tell us exactly. So, um, if you do it all right and you grab each can the way it says, it'll mix that same yellow every time, which is super handy. So, like I said, when you get you know years of helmets and they're all sitting next to each other, you all want to make sure they look the same. And this corporate sponsor is paying millions of dollars to have all their stuff look the best on TV. You want the car to match, you want the fire suit to match, you want the helmet to match. So um, it's it's just kind of working with all the different manufacturers, like the wrap company, the fire suit company, and making sure our stuff um, looks just as nice as everything else. So there's a lot that goes into it, more than what people probably think. Yeah, I was, I was wondering how that mixing process goes. If it was, you know, you're looking at like a line or something, or if it you know, the weight, that makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense, yeah. So I used to like eyeball it back in the day. They'd have like a, like a measuring, you know, thing on there or whatever, and you kind of fill it up to whatever. But 
Um, that thing will tell, if we want four ounces or 16 ounces of whatever paint, it'll tell us exactly, uh, exactly how to mix it and exactly how to do it right. Hmm. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Do you have any observations? I'm curious how it works with like the metallics and like flex and stuff. Uh, and how do you manage to keep it clean? Because I don't see glitter anywhere in here. I know. Well, you said there are. When we do glitter, curious. when we do metal flick. Little girls call it glitter, but um, <laughs> if you're a guy, if you're a race car driver, you gotta call it metal flakes. So. Oh, it's glitter. Yeah, give me one of the glitter. glitter. Give me some glitter. <laughs> so yeah, it, that stuff you just mix in the clears or mix in the inner coat clears. It just depends on how big the flake is. It's kind of different ways you do it, but yeah, we try to keep it clean. We try to like throw down something on the booth or something if we are gonna spray the glitter or whatever. So, <laughs> um, but if you do that, like you usually cover the whole helmet and then you'll clear it. And then you'll sand it back down so like you just start with like a whole base so same with the chrome like you know to get all those like chrome lines the whole helmet has to be chrome to start out and then you go back and start taping stuff off how do you make a chrome helmet how do you, what's <laughs> so we have uh cosmochrome which is another uh partner of our company and we do it all in-house now which is, is super cool and to answer the question i honestly don't know how it works <laughs> i just know that you mix certain chemicals with certain things and you use a certain primer um i mean it's a process it's a it's usually a three-day process to chrome a helmet with all the drying times and everything else but um i have no idea what's in the chemicals i just know it works and it's like magic <laughs> like, like the first time i did it i was like oh my god like what did i do like it's i don't know <laughs> You do it right, and it and it happens, and then you seal it up, and then you can paint your artwork over it. It's pretty cool. How many times does a typical helmet come in and out of here before it's done? Um, quite a few. So it goes in and out of the paint booth probably four or five times. You'll do the base coat. You do all your airbrushing, tape up stuff, and then you'll clear it. Usually try to go home, sleep as many hours as you can, come back in the morning, sand it down, and then you'll do more stuff to it. So. I don't know, you're in and out of here all day just depending on how much the detail is, you know. So like this all has blue and you know, white and silver and everything underneath there. So he taped all that off today and then now he's just doing the red details. And then once the red details are done, you'll peel it all up like Christmas morning basically and see what you got and then do the next color and the you know, the next details. So it really just depends on how, you know, crazy complicated the design is, but I'm usually like Big sponsors like that, they like all their logos over solid colors, super clean. So it's not not too crazy, but you get some dirt guys who don't want you know to go wild and stuff and don't really have any obligations they have to do. That's a good question. She asks about the glitter because she makes stuff with uh, <laughs> glitter all the time and always manages to like get it everywhere. And I don't like it because it sticks to me. I'm like I don't want glitter it stuck want to me. Glitter. Like contain your glitter. So she's like. How do you contain your glitter? Yeah. <laughs> That's the backstory of that question. I'm trying to fix the problem. We yes, have, you are. <laughs> we have uh, tricks for how lost we, we don't know. We get yelled at by our wives and girlfriends when we go home thinking that we we're in other places than the paint booth. So okay. it just depends. You guys can come back. More than well, like come back and paint a helmet. It's a very boring process. Um, every time somebody wants to come film it, I'm like, just buckle up because it's uh, it's like 30 to 40 hours of taping and and everything else so it's much better as a time lapse than it is to come in and actually watch it <laughs> oh i'd love to paint a helmet kind of cool stuff in here it's almost like a little you know museum of are these like uh guys that you paint for that it's like here have a bumper or yeah whatever so most everything has a story um he's done that's william byron's from i think martinsville from a couple of years ago but the one on the other side is ryan reed's from his first daytona win um, and then the one on the other side of that, it's like the first uh, truck race at Eldora because I try to, I try to get something if it's like a big race or historic race, I try to grab something you know to kind of commemorate it. So most everything on the wall kind of has a pretty cool story to it. Yeah, like the Mark Martin one that you told us about before we started filming. Uh, yeah, so that one has a really cool story actually because Mark was one of our you know first big cup guys we painted for, but. Um, I worked for a dirt team before I moved out here, and uh, this one night, our driver, another driver, got in a big altercation, and uh, 
ended up like nose to nose and and pushing each other and ended up getting kicked off the tour for like a year so i said i want the hood off that the way it came off the track <laughs> so i grabbed that one so it's i don't know it's just a cool a cool memory it sucked being kicked off the lucas wall tour for a year but um it's a pretty cool story and i'm sure mark would remember if we told him about it <laughs> so the off-axis deck lid is pretty cool um matt mills ran that like martinsville a couple of years ago and he was like, hey, I don't have a, a sponsor on the deck lid. I'm just going to throw off axis on there. And I was like, yeah, it's fine. You're like, no one's probably going to see it. Uh, ends up the car catches on fire, and there's, like, fire, like, flames, like, coming over the hood and, like, or the uh, the trunk. And um, you can see our logo, like, perfectly on TV. And I was like, oh, well, that paid for itself. <laughs> Perfect free sponsorship. So, so we were just going to take a thumbnail picture, and he starts showing us this. So this is, like, way too cool to not show up close because it's just awesome. So the whole helmet's carbon fiber, and then we candy it red first. So the whole helmet goes red, and then you clear it, sand it, and then you go back and start doing all the uh, all the artwork and stuff over it. That's freaking awesome. And you, you can't even see that unless you're like two feet from it, or yeah. it's in the right light. Yeah, so when it's like on the car right before the race or something, it's, you know, a bright sunny day, it really pops. And all it's got a bunch of pearls and stuff in it too. So it'll look sick once it's, once it's out of there. And then like this one's the same way. It starts that carbon carbon fiber. And Martin likes the, the matte finish, so that's the way it'll stay on this one. Huh. But yeah, everyone knows their preference, you know? It's pretty cool. First ones I painted. It might be the first, but yeah, it's terrible. This is pinstripe tape from O'Reilly's. It's all done with t-shirt paint, not any automotive paint. And then I had a buddy, uh, Sean Hatcher back home, he used to just clear all my stuff. He owned like a body shop with collision stuff and he would literally just throw my helmet in with the cars or whatever that was getting painted that night and clear one coat for me and I would come back and pick it up the next morning and I thought it was the coolest thing so yeah this one's gross and dirty and the insides are very dirty but was this a, a personal helmet or did somebody run this uh someone ran this so the dirt team I worked for that's who that's I that kind of got my start and I was like oh I'll paint your helmets and do something cool so um so this is this is your progression how long ago was this oh 15 years probably wow so i've been painting for me and noel have been painting for almost 20 years together so we're pretty pretty close we know each other better than like our own siblings basically <laughs> that's really cool yeah so it's cool i mean i've i learned a ton from him so that's it's just cool to have him here progressing with me and just you know pushing ourselves every helmet that comes out of here it's we're not really trying to like impress the customer i mean overall you are but Honestly, you're trying to impress those guys out in the shop the most time. So just to just to better ourselves and always be better artists. You just beat yourself. Yeah, that's it. You about to do it like right now? Yeah. Oh, cool. So that we were like, you know, about to wrap this up, and he's like, "No, I'm gonna, I'm about to paint well, some stuff." Well, it just to, keeps getting better. Yeah. I was trying to like rush and get that trim put on there and everything so I could tape it up. Don't rush it. I'll see you're gonna rush Alex's yeah. helmet. <laughs> it's okay. It's been falling on me anyway. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I'm just I'm basically like touching up around because we'll we'll tape up the visor because it's got like the rubber trim around here. Well, to keep all the paint and stuff off it, we'll tape it all up, and then for the final one, we'll tape it up again and then spray around, make sure all that's nice and clean. It's bright for sure. With it being an ally, they give us enough uh, different colors of pink to choose from and purple. To... <laughs> different colors of pink. <laughs> What does that do? Mix it? Yeah, basically it'll mix it with like the reducer uh, that we use to thin our paints with. Hmm. A lot of guys will like shake it up and stuff, but I don't like to use caps on, on our guns, so. Why is that? That way I'm not like in the middle of something and then, the, oh, I'm out. It's Got like I, I, I can keep an eye on it. And... That makes sense. All right, there we go. So yeah, like all where you kind of see the white still left right there. Yeah. Going in and cleaning that up. And then like on this side, you can tell where it's... Oh yeah, I can see there's a little bit in there. Yep. So then... I'm really just here for moral support. This is what I do most days. <laughs> I'm like, good job, Noel. Way to go. <laughs> and then I leave. <laughs> Actually, can you grab that pearl? Oh my gosh, I'd love to. How may I help you? <laughs> the, the, the pearl purple, please. This? Yeah. 
So you're the paint paint guy, shitter? Yeah, I just get in <laughs> I started the company and then I I just help Will now, like his assistant. <laughs> like, oh, can I get Lovely you in? assistant. <laughs> yeah, you guys paint each other for fun. Like, you're the board. It's like, oh yes, paint something on me. Every Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> like, so what, is your, what you're painting right now going to get covered by a rubber seal? No, so what I'm what I'm painting right now, I mean, it'll be seen. It's it's actually like right along the outside of the rubber seal. So, um, just cleaning it up because most of the, most of the like in car shots, like before the race starts, you know, they just got the helmet on, they're putting their gloves on, visors up, mm -hmm. and you you would see all of that. So we want to make sure that that's all cleaned up before we before we send it out. Great content, all. Great work. <laughs> ah, that's why the foam is on the edge. It's a prop. Yep. <laughs> I see. Otherwise, you're dinging it and scratching it all over the place. And whose invention was that? I don't remember. I didn't come up. I mean, they—they I mean, they were, they were. Greg was using it before I. Uh, before I came along, but... I mean, if I came up with it, I feel like I'm pretty smart, but I feel like I saw someone else probably do it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we breathe a lot of paint in here, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's gonna go in the, like, the first five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> what does this look like where you just took the tape off? Beautiful. It looks clean now. <laughs> so every helmet gets balls rubbed on it. I just, I just watched you do it. Yeah. <laughs> every single one. Good luck, Alex. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully it wins and then we'll sit on the picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now when will this helmet be done? Um, probably tomorrow. Like we'll final clear it tonight mm -hmm. and then we'll build it tomorrow. Um, and then Alex will leave for the Chili Bowl next week. So it'll get raced like a week from now. The clear really adds to it, especially if you're putting, uh, you know, any kind of flake or anything in the clear or when it's like chrome. You can't really tell what it's going to look like, and then you clear it, and it all kind of comes to life. Hmm. Yeah, we'll show you kind of like, this has got like a bunch of pearl in it. Which you won't, I mean, you can't really, you can't really tell now, but once that clear gets on it. We'll do this and... Oh, Like, you yeah. can see all that in there? Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. can't see those, the flakes in the, when it's scuffed like that. Yeah, it really dulls it down after... Once it's sanded, but man, that clear coat gets on there and really pops. Huh? The clear coat. The clear coat. Yeah. <laughs> what did I say? I... Yeah, I'm just saying. Oh. Just say it like 16 more times. Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> the clear coat. What would you tell somebody that is like what you were when you were 15, 16 years old, didn't know what you were going to do? Yeah, if you, if you could go back and talk to yourself at your most confused, lost point, what would you tell yourself? Um, gosh. Well, see, when that when that moment happened, I was actually uh, wanting to get into sculpture, like do graphic design and things like that. And my, uh, well, those, those two don't go together at all, do they? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was like doing sculpture. Well, our art teacher that he was had mentioned earlier, he, uh, he took a like a wire cutting tool, and I was doing like some kind of bust of Julius Caesar, which I mean it sucked. It was god awful. And he took the wire cutting tool and just went right down the middle of it. It's like this isn't for you. This is not what you're going to be doing. <laughs> so he uh, he handed a he got me and a couple other students to do some airbrushing and. And after that, it was like, okay, now some of my classmates want like t-shirts done for homecoming or, you know, football game, basketball game, whatever it is. And so then it just kind of started taking off and I started doing caricatures at the same time. And it was like, man, this is pretty good, you know, making pretty good money at this. Of course, when I'm in school, I can't make, I can't make any money. So they, they pay for paints and stuff so I can keep doing it. Hmm. And uh, cause that's, that's the big, you know, that's the big cost of, of doing this is, what am I trying to say? I don't know. Is, you don't know? <laughs> I asked you why you would tell people. Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm, yeah. I, I, now yeah, we're talking I, about cost of paint. Yeah, yeah no, sorry. Um, this is it. I just told you, we breathe a lot of paint. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, if it's somebody who's, 
like really into art, I would be like, you know, if it, and because what I did, I drew all the time. Like I drew in my math notes. I they helped me out of art class one year because I was was so bad at math. But then you know I'm using my art now to do really cool, you know, really cool helmets and stuff. And I would I would just tell somebody to keep at it. And you know, if 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 your deal is art, draw all the time, practice until you know. Practice until you fall asleep painting, which I've done that too, by the way. What? Did I still not answer, did I still not answer the question? No, it's, just keep, just keep at it. How would you answer that question? I would say it's like any other like like craft that you're learning, and or like playing the guitar or anything like that. Ten thousand hours is like the key, you know. So mm -hmm. once you hit that, yes. you're you're pretty much a pro at it. People get mad at us and like, oh, you have God-given talent or whatever, but. I mean, we spent a lot of hours doing this every single day over and over and over. So, yeah, it helps to be artistic starting out, but um, it's not going to get you very far if you don't just keep doing it every day. Was there a point when you were, either one of you, when you were doing this stuff that you felt like, I like doing this, I need to make money, I'd like to make money doing this, but I don't feel like I'm worthy of being paid to do it yet. Like, did you feel like you weren't good enough to get paid to do it yet? Yeah, yeah, for sure. When I first moved out here, for sure. Really? Yeah, and I think, I think me taking over like the business side of it helps, you know, Noel or any of these other guys, because it's not that they don't feel, but I feel like in as as an artist, you have one side of the mind or the other that kind of fires better, and so if you're a great artist like Noel is, he's amazing at what he does. I feel like you kind of struggle on that other side of like bidding jobs and everything else which goes back to having the financial a financial side of it yeah, yeah. it goes it not saying you're bad with money or anything like that but just bidding a job and knowing you're like your worth of what the job is because to doing this is easy to know as it's you know easy for me so it doesn't feel like you're it feels like we're flipping burgers honestly it doesn't it doesn't feel like we should be paying you know getting paid big money for something like this so it goes back to our teacher he was really good about teaching us like overall how to go in talk to people bidding jobs and working at theme parks you know all, all the time you're the only person in that kiosk painting shirts or doing characters where you had to, you had to talk to the customer you had to take the money you had to you know basically an invoice and then do the product so so I your art teacher actually talked to you about the business side of that like doing art not just here's how you paint a picture but here's yeah. how you make paint a picture and operate yourself as an artist as a profession oh yeah mm. so, really like I've never heard of that. Artists, That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, he's not a conventional, you know, teacher, basically, so... Yeah, the, yeah. as far as other teachers go, like, I mean, but with we'll, we'll, what we were wanting to do, like, when when I was probably a junior or senior in high school, he was like a freshman or just getting into high school, and uh, we started doing murals with it, like, in an, other classrooms and stuff. Well, once, like, summer came, and like new schools were popping up and everything, we went with our art teacher and he was basically showing us how to like bid, like the proper way to bid, like whether it be square footage or the detail of the job or something like that. That was something else that kind of helped. Super lucky, honestly. Like when I tell me like we both took some college classes, we were like, oh, we don't really need this. Like we both kind of dropped out of college. So not saying that's for everybody. No, don't. I dropped out too. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, honestly, once you do that and you have all this like, not street knowledge, but like, you know, everyday real life situations you're going through every day. I don't, you don't really need that type of schooling. You can just do what you're doing. So. Ooh, yeah. What, what, did, what did you just say? I said, <laughs> I'm always still at the end of the video for when people are like, oh, for the people still here, here's some stories. Like, that's me. It's my, it's just me watching. <laughs> I'm always watching. And I'm waiting on my handwritten note with the merch, so. Exactly. Yeah. Which you can find at stableandautoworks.com. Shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, whatever, yeah. That's what you do, you gotta do it. If you wanna visit Shop Off Axis, go ahead. After you clicked on Stableton Auto Works, <laughs> go on over there. If someone yeah, wanted some, to get a helmet. You got some sick shirts and some. You can buy this shirt. Sugar. Straight yeah, off. You can have this one. Yep. With the holes and paint and all. There's a belly button hole. The what? Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your shirt shirt? That's, that's collateral holy. damage. <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing? 
that that's just how it, I don't know how I got that. Our shirts do not. <laughs> I really like don't. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that's new, is this, is uh, this good back here? Yeah, that's the new Noel line. It's like, do you want your friends to think you're artistic? Buy these used. <laughs> do you buy these used pants? Everyone yeah, will think you could walk around at like you know the new hip area of downtown, and all the girls with blue hair will follow you around. I remember my mom hitting my blue jeans through Abercrombie that had paint splatters yeah. on them. Really? Yes. Dude, you got some expensive pants on. Thanks. How much would you sell those pants for? Two hundred dollars. Okay. Two hundred. I like a thousand. Oh. A thousand? At least. There's probably, there's at least $200 worth of paint on no, here. No, <laughs> what kind worth. of paint? Uh, latex paint. No. Uh, <laughs> oh, my bad, my bad. Paint. Well, what kind of paint is on there? There you go. We got, we got to train you for the camera. <laughs> terrible. That's why he stays in the booth. That's why, yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm not the face of this company. That's some weird stuff. Like, especially when we used to work at like the theme parks and like, people would be like, oh, I want, the, like, like the things that would come out of people's mouths, they're like, what? Like, you can get anything painted and this is what you, this is what you want? Yeah, so I used to do uh, caricatures out at theme parks, mm -hmm. over by where we live. And then uh, soon after that, we did t-shirts. Well, we did all these crazy requests for, like, I think the craziest thing we did was, like, I painted a bass, because we live next to one of, like, the, like, better trout lakes, in like all of America, so somebody wanted like a rainbow trout with breasts, and <laughs> it's like, it's like, well. And did you do it? It's a first, I did do it. <laughs> do you have a picture of it? Oh man, probably somewhere. We should. I do. I. I. I I'm, I'm pretty sure I've got it. Pretty epic. Yeah. <laughs> so somewhere there's a guy walking around with an airbrush T-shirt yep. and a fish with boots. Yeah, I mean there, there's. There, there wasn't really a limit to uh, to what we could do. Like we would paint uh, paint at car shows and stuff. So you, you're messing with like a lot of people who've been drinking quite a bit. <laughs> um, some guy lost, I don't know if he lost a bet or something, and didn't have any hair. So we painted a, a nipple on the very top of his head. <laughs> and this this was like the last day of the car show. So the night before, we're all. Uh, Drinking beer and eating pizza because that's when they got all the everybody who had a car in the show got them all together to to have this pizza party. And he lost I I don't know what the full story was, but he kind of lost a bet or something. And yeah, sure enough, he was visit he was going to see us that that next morning. And so car show guys are weird. Just moral of the story. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Weird.